Hello, my friends. It is Monday, the fourth week of Advent, and oh my goodness, friends, yes, still at 40 years old, I get so excited for Christmas. I get excited because I get to spend tons of time at church this time of year, and here's the thing. So I'm a little bit further away from family until later on, until after Christmas, but during this season right here, I get to spend so much time with friends, friends who are pretty much family. Oh, it's the best. I just love this time of year. My calendar is chock full of all of the best things. This is a great time of year and Christmas is right around the corner. So, so, so excited. The title of today's devotion is Rooms. We're going to take our Bibles and we're going to open them up to Matthew 1 so that we can read verses 18 through 25 together, okay? Now, just like the last two days, this chunk of scripture sounds like a lot, but it's pretty condensed. So go ahead and look it up. And you're really going to want to have your eyes on this. It's one of those chunks of scripture, one of those narrations that we have heard over and over and over again. And so having our eyes on it, maybe God will call out something new this year that you've never seen before. So go ahead, press pause, get your Bibles open to Matthew 1, and then we'll read 18 through 25 together. I'll wait patiently. Okay, are you guys all set? I am too, I have my Bible right here. I'm trying to contain my giddiness. It's a little challenging, it's a little tricky. Okay, Matthew 1, 18 through 25 says this. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. You know, our daughter had our grandson Cooper a little less than a year ago. Um, I, I mean, like his birthday is the 28th, so it's coming up right now. And um, none of us knew what his name was. And it was kind of, oh, it was kind of stressful not knowing what his sweet name would be. Um, in fact, we didn't even know that he was gonna be a little boy, but not knowing his name, gosh, that was so, oh, that was one of those things, right? Where, you know, you don't know what he's gonna be like. You don't know when he's gonna be born, those kinds of things. But just to know a name, oh, that helps you get through some of those moments of waiting, right? Well, with Mary and Joseph, they did know the name that they were going to give their son. They did know that they would be having a boy. Um, there was a lot of things that were still very confusing and very unknown to them. But how wonderful that the name wasn't one of those things that they had to be concerned with or worry about. I know it seems simple and it's very human to think about that, but um, what a wonderful gift that God gave them in not having to name Jesus. Oh, what a gift. I wonder if Abby and Christian would have appreciated that. Mm, no, I know that they had a boy name picked out for a long time. And now just as a reminder, the title of our devotion is Rooms. And it starts out with kind of a tricky question, okay? It says, can I love this one? Said the adoptive father of a new baby boy, not questioning the value of the boy, but of his own abilities as a father and his own capacity for love. Inside what I know to be the tiny chambers of my heart, I find rooms that leave me breathless with their size. Rooms filled with comfortable furniture of a loved one's presence. Just when I think there is no room in me for another, when I feel my capacity for love is stretched to the limit, I find another room, another beloved one. And I too ask the question, 
can I love this one? No doubt, Joseph asked himself that question time and again as he watched his adopted son grow inside his young wife. Sometime though, maybe in that dream, he walked through the corridors of his heart and happened to open a door named Jesus. Wandered in and never left. Let's pray. Lord God, when we think we have reached the limit of our love, take us for a walk to see the room with our name on it in your heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this is full of just enough of whimsy and imagery that of course it's tender to me and I love it so much. I'm going to reread this one a few more times. I love you all so much. I'll try to uh, relax so I can get some work done today. Um, but just know that I am giddy for Christmas just like you are. I love you so much and we'll talk soon. Bye.